Lolly Duck. Welcome to Full HD. Yeah? That's Welsh, by the way. So I've been riding motorbikes for years and I've raced most disciplines, but I've always loved rally riding. I love the adventure it brings, I love the places it takes you, and mostly I love the people you get to meet along the way. So about a year ago, I created a brand called Rally Duck, and that was just to bring the community together and create and share a passion for rally racing. And with that community, most of all, it's about having fun riding bikes. So I wanted to prove that you could take any motorbike and go and race it. It would have made sense to pick an off-road bike or an adventure bike or what most people normally think of when they see rally. But that would have been far too sensible for us. And we're not sensible with a name like Rally Duck. I want that cheesy grin in. But Rally Duck isn't just about me. I wanted you, the viewer, to come along with me on the whole experience. So I got in contact with all the agents of all the big names, the Spielbergs, the Camerons, but none of them were available. So I got in contact with this guy. So when you're riding off-road, you've got a couple of choices. You can either Ollie, take... yeah. Alex on the phone. Who? Alex. <laughs> Can you tell him whatever crazy idea he's got, I am not interested? Yeah, I'm not your secretary. Well, just hang up, I'll call him back. I'm only kidding. Obviously, when Alad phoned me with his wacky idea, I was instantly hooked. Not just because it was him and Rally Duck, but because of the bike we were going to use. It's a Harley Davidson. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is so bloody ridiculous. <laughs> this is a 1992 Harley Davidson. Oh, it's in my armpits. <laughs> so, why don't I just get Harley Davidson to tell you? <laughs> Full HD is proudly supported by the following sponsors. Okay, so now we've had the really punchy intro and the uh, definitely not staged pieces of film. I just wanted to take a moment to slow things down and talk to you so you can understand the enormity of this project. It all came about just as we said. One day Alad phoned me completely out of the blue, I think he'd gone down a YouTube hole, and he wanted to race a Harley Davidson in a rally. I'll be honest, I didn't think it was gonna happen, but then a week later, he sent me this picture. When I got that photo, I knew we were committed, but I had no idea how we were gonna pull this one off. 
That bike was not designed for rallies. It was designed for cruising along the nice American roads. 30 years ago when they made that bike, they did not think, in 30 years time, two British lads are gonna to want to race this. Let's make sure they can do it easily. Now, I don't want you to think we're doing just any rally. We're not just rocking up the road in the UK and taking part in a weekend event. We have gone in with both feet. And to explain that better, look at this. The Dakar Rally is the best known off-road race in the world. Over the course of the event, the competitors traveled thousands of miles across tough terrain. It's tough on them and it's tough on their bikes. No, we're not doing the Dakar. That would be like building a sports bike in your garage and then just pulling up to the MotoGP start line. It's not gonna happen. However, like I said, we have gone in with both feet and we're still going big. Now to explain how the rally world all links together, let's make a little animation. The Dakar is a standalone event, meaning that it's not linked to any championship. And it's also what me and Al would call a tier one event, meaning that only the elite races take part in it. The main series that people fight to win is the FIM World Championship. This is also a tier one event, and as you could probably guess, it takes place in loads of different countries around the world. To link this to the Dakar, if you imagine that winning the World Championship is like winning the crown, then the Dakar would be a little bling gem in that crown. Beneath the World Championship sits the European Championship, a tier two event. Now at the time of making this graphic, there was only three confirmed races in this series. The Hellas Rally in Greece, the Transcarpatic Rally in Romania, and then one in Portugal that I can't pronounce. And it's Hellas that we've entered with this crazy project. This project is gonna be a massive challenge. Luckily for us though, we've had the support of some awesome sponsors for the series. We've got companies that are gonna help us with the bike build, we've got companies that are gonna help us with all the kit and the riding gear, and we're talking big names here, like world championship winning big names. As Alad alluded to in the intro, there's plenty of other bikes out there that would have made our job a lot easier. And to give you an example of this, I'm now gonna hand her over to Alad, who's gonna tell you a little bit about rally bikes. <coughs> well, I think that's all the sponsor t-shirts I've got on me right now. Getting on I'm, I'm loving life. Like, I don't know why anyone would want a digital road book. <laughs> so this is a rally bike. This one started out as a standard Husqvarna 701. You buy a kit from any of the manufacturers you want. They send it to you in the post. You bolt it on, and you end up with something that looks like this. So let's go through some of the details. So rally means long distances, and for long distances, you need a lot of fuel. You've got two big tanks at the front and one at the rear. The two tanks at the front keep the center of gravity a lot lower because the fuel sits lower on the bike. The lower the center of the gravity, the easier it is to handle. The other difference you'll notice is the fairing on the front. The fairing allows you to mount your lights, your navigation equipment, and any tracking equipment the organizers give you for the races. Some other details are the rack on the back so you can carry your tools. You've got wider foot pegs for comfort. You've got a steering damper, which helps. I don't really know what to say about that bit. What, what's it do? I've never had one. You've got a steering damper fitted, which stops the front end of the bike moving around on any loose surfaces like sand or pebbles, and it helps it track straight. One of the main things people notice about a rally bike is the road book. We'll go into the details of how a road book works later on, but effectively, it's turn-by-turn -turn directions and gives us warnings that someone has drawn on a toilet roll. We mount that into here, and then we control it backwards and forwards by buttons on the handlebars. But you don't have to have an amazing machine like this. Rally is accessible to anyone, and you can usually do it on whatever you've got in your garage. We'll have a look at my Rally light bike in a minute, but first, I've got to take this for a spin. So before we ride the bike or start stripping the bike, we should really give you an introduction of what the bike's all about. So this is a 1992 Harley Davidson. It's a Sportster 883, meaning the engine's got 883 cc's. These bikes did also come in a 1200 version, but we've got the smaller engine. However, we're gonna change that, so more to come. The Sportster then, from 91 to 2003, was the same specification. It had carburetors and it was rigid mounted, meaning that the engine is bolted directly to the frame. Nowadays, engines are mounted through rubber mounts, so when the bike's moving around and the engine's moving around, it takes out some of that stress, but we don't want that on a rally bike 
bike, which is why we picked this 92 version. We need this bike to handle well for Alan so he doesn't fall off a cliff. So we don't want a rubber mount that might change some of the handling as he's flat out along the trail. So a normal rally bike would have a fair bit of suspension so it can clear all the obstacles. If you look at this bike, it's got about that much. We're gonna fit new forks for this bike and raise the front, and we also need to fit new shocks to the back. It's currently got six inch shocks, which are pretty useless for what we want to do. Good for what you'd normally do on a Harley, bad for rally. So we're gonna change those shocks just to give it a bit more ground clearance so that Alad can get over the bumps nice and easily in Greece. At the moment, the tires that it's running are 19 inch on the front, 16 inch on the back. We need 21 on the front, 18 inch on the rear, because that's what all rally bikes use, which is the same as enduro bikes. It means we have a bigger range of tires. It means we can fit things like mooses, which we'll explain later in the series if you're not sure what they are. But it just makes it a lot easier to work on when we're out about on the rally. Now, belt drive is a classic Harley-Davidson attribute, meaning that the rear wheel is driven by a belt as opposed to by a chain. Again though, that can go wrong. There's companies that offer conversions, chain conversions, to take this from a belt to a chain, and that's exactly what we're gonna do with this one. This bike has one carburetor, which is good, because they can be a pain to work on, but we are gonna update this carburetor just so it's jetted a bit better for racing. And, and this is the most important bit, this bike weighs an absolute ton, so we need to strip some of the weight. Now we want this to still look like a Harley-Davidson, and to some extent feel like a Harley-Davidson, but Alan's got to ride this off-road at pace in a race, so it needs to be capable. We need to strip some of that weight off, make it easier to handle, and then hopefully, hopefully, it will at least get to the end. Like we said then, Rally is accessible on a wide variety of bikes. This is my very standard Yamaha WR450. I've changed a couple of parts on it to get it so specific to rallying and then specific to me. I'll run you through a couple of bits I've changed. So Ollie, if you want to come here. Obviously the, uh, the main part is the road book and the trip meter. So my road book is just mounted onto the handlebars with these two clamps and it's still controlled by the same button on the handlebars. And then this is my trip meter. This is actually just my phone and it just clips off like that and goes back on, he says. And that's purely so that I can take this from rally setup to enduro setup with that click and then four volts and it's back to a standard enduro bike. I've changed the bars to my bend, so I like a Rental 996. So I've changed those bars and I've changed the grips from standard. It's standard gearing, standard engine internals. I haven't even changed the main gearing, so it's the gearing it comes with out of the, out of the factory. Standard suspension internals, standard brakes, standard pads, standard rims, standard airbox. That is, is pretty much it, other than quite a trick exhaust system. You don't need this for rallying, but it is a bit tarty and I kind of like it. There is the one main part that you need for rally. Obviously, everyone associates rally with going fast, horsepower, all that sort of things. And everybody knows that rally duck stickers add 60 horsepower. This bike has four rally duck stickers. So we're running at like 208 horsepower here with the original 60 plus the four 60 adding stickers. <laughs> You're just explaining your maths there, are you? <laughs> really double checking in my brain as well. Like. Add rally duck stickers, you will go faster. As you've seen then, the barrier to entry really isn't what it's perceived to be with most rallies. You can do it on a fully fledged rally bike or you can do it on a pretty standard enduro bike. You just need a road book setup and you need fuel capacity. That's it. With that being said though, really haven't made this task easy for ourselves taking what you've seen as the standard 1992 Harley Sportster. With that in mind, I think it's about time I went and got the spanners out. Next time on Full HD. He's broken it. He's broken it.